the Nerds of Color, and I'm here with one of the greatest actors and creators of our generation, Mr. Oh, Justin Gordon Levitt. Hi, Joe. <laughs> very kind words. Thank you. Thank it's you. Very, good to talk to you, Mike. Good to talk to you too. It's very true words, honestly speaking. Um, it, for especially for me, I've been a fan for some time. Um, and I I know how amazing you are. Um, again, you, you are you are creating this amazing series, um, this really relevant, poignant, hard-hitting series called Mr. Corman. And I wanted to know where did Mr. Corman come from and how did you come up with the idea? I came up with Mr. Corman. Uh, well, I was actually just looking back at my earliest notes of when I wrote down the idea for the first time. And it was from 2015, which is the year I became a dad. And I think becoming a dad sort of brought me into adulthood in a way that I hadn't felt before and made me take stock of my life. And I just feel so grateful for so many things. I feel grateful for my partner, my wife, who I love so much. We have our kid. I have two wonderful parents. I get to do work that's meaningful to me. You know, I'm, I'm healthy and safe. I have, I have so much to be grateful for. And that gets me thinking, you know, a lot of that just comes down to luck. I don't want to take for granted all those things I'm grateful for because they didn't necessarily need to happen that way. It could have been different. And the character of Mr. Corman, you know, Josh Corman, he sounds sort of like Joseph Gordon. He's a lot like me, but I started changing certain things. Like, for example, what if I didn't have two wonderful parents? What if I had one great parent and one who was maybe more of a problem and caused a bit of a chaotic childhood for me? How would that cascade? Or what if... I hadn't quite met the love of my life yet. And Josh met someone he thought was the right one, but didn't work out. Or what if I hadn't been able to earn a living as an artist? I think anybody that makes it in show business is lucky. And you know, you hear people sometimes talking about like, oh, I, I, you know, I deserve everything I got because I worked hard for it. I just don't think that's true. I, you know, I know a lot of people that worked just as hard as I did and, and didn't get the lucky breaks that, that I got. So I always thought that if I, hadn't gotten those lucky breaks, one of the things I'd love doing is teaching. I find teaching to be such, such an inspiring thing. You know, we all talk about wanting to make an impact. What's more impactful than a good teacher? I know in my life, I've had some teachers that made such a difference to me in my life. I, I wish that teachers were valorized and celebrated the way that entertainers are. And, and it, that's how it should be. If I could wave a magic wand, that's the way that our world would work. Teachers would be the famous ones. Here, here. Um, I, I wanted to ask, uh, there's a lot of really great themes in this, uh, very human themes, uh, particularly when you're dealing with anxiety or unfulfilled goals and dreams. Um, if out of all of those amazing themes that you explore in the show, what is the one takeaway that you'd love for audiences to to get from Mr. Corman. What's the one takeaway I would love audiences to get? Well, look, first, I, I hope people just have a good time and have a few laughs. Uh, you know, I find that some of the, in some of my darkest moments, I have to laugh. And Mr. Corman is, I think, ultimately a hopeful show and has just as much light as it does darkness. But I think a, a healthy balance of both is what makes it feel like real life. And so I, I would say that, you know, being able to laugh at those dark moments, I think is, is a good thing. And then, like I said, gratitude. I was talking about how the show sort of started as an exercise in gratitude for me. And, and I think gratitude is something we could also probably all use more of. I know I could. And, and we all have a lot to be grateful for. You know, anybody who's, who's watching this show, The Nerds of Color, and anybody who's going to watch Mr. Corman, who has the spare time and a home and a TV or a phone or whatever it is you're watching, that, we have a lot to be grateful for relative to a lot of human beings that are alive on the planet right now. And so taking a moment to be grateful, you know, I think that that would be a takeaway that I would hope people can get from Mr. Corman and watching this character who wants to be grateful, wants to be happy, but isn't always successful. Which is incredibly human, honestly. Yeah. Um, I, I will say, uh, as far as laughing goes, I laughed aloud so much, uh, especially one of my favorite scenes was the weighted blanket scene with you and Arturo. Oh, right on. Um, <laughs> dude, how did you make it through that? Were you like laughing the entire time? <laughs> <laughs> we did a lot of takes of that scene. Yeah, so we definitely laughed at first, especially when we were rehearsing it. But then, uh, yeah, you know, that's also, you know, that scene is a long one. 
And that's one of, to me, one of the things I like the most about Mr. Corman. And it's a tribute to Apple TV Plus for, you know, giving us the creative free reign to do it. The standard convention in television is you keep scenes short, you move on to the next thing. Audiences have short attention spans. You gotta, but I find that if you can settle into a scene and go into more depth, oftentimes that's when you get those really relatable moments and where you get those big belly laps like you're talking about. And so that's a long scene. We worked up from this whole big scene where it's, you know, me and Arturo and we're talking about our lives and talking about how Josh is, he's, you know, feeling like he's worried that he's, you know, blown the whole thing and he sucks as a person. And it eventually gets to this weighted blanket thing. And, you know, I, I didn't want to be afraid. I'm like, let's have a whole real in-depth conversation. here. Yeah. Well, I wish we had more time. There's so much more I could ask you, but I just wanted to tell you, amazing show, one of the deepest and most visually stunning with amazing music uh, that I've seen Thanks. so, you know, this year or any year. Um, so congratulations on this wonderful show and, and thank you thank for everything. You. Thank you for sharing yeah, with us. Yeah, man, thank you. I, I'm really flattered. So great talking to you, Mike. Thanks a Absolutely. lot. Absolutely. Great talking to you too, Joe. Have a great one. Movies and TV, yeah. Pop culture with a different perspective. Watch it on your screen. Hit play, so check this.